Coca-Cola Racing by Erebus Motorsport. And these guys are off to a ripping start. Let's see what it all looks, sounds and feels like for Brody in the run into turn one. Picked up that throttle nice and early over the top of the curb. Let's have another listen up here in the braking area at two. Nice, he was right on the braking limit. You could sense that the front left of that car wanted to lock up. Awesome speed shot as he plunges down the hill, building speed to the old 100 miles an hour. It's 160 k's at its peak down there, and he tracks sacrifice to be able to sneak in and shortcut effectively the left-hander down there at turn seven. He's used every little bit of road through that piece there. His first sector wasn't quite good enough, but I think the middle sector looks very strong. We'll give you that number in a second. It's right there. There's nothing in this. I've never seen a top 10 that's this close. At the moment, there's two, 0.2 of a second separates nine cars. Yeah. It's encouraging out of the second last corner. And how's the way they just all feed so far to the right-hand side on exit to protect those tyres? Is this going to sit and squat and launch strong enough to be able to get him at the top of the end of the game? And the answer is yes. Brody Kostecki, 1 minute 11.8. The only driver in the 11s, and Barry's prediction has come true. And for the opening race of the Supercars Championship, the three-time champion gets the job done. Shane Van Gisbergen, the winner of the very first Gen 3 supercar outing in 2023. It has been confirmed that Shane Van Gisbergen and Brock Feeney have been excluded from race one of the championship, which means effectively, Mark Skate, they have been disqualified for yesterday's race. Shane's looking to get down the inside at turn six. Now, Brody covers. But what he's got to do now, don't run in too hard, hold the car to the inside and come out of the throttle. Don't let him down the inside. Hold it there, hold it there, hold it there. That's it, well done. Yep. Nice job. But he's still going to have a crack down the inside here, Van Gisbergen, but Brody's awake up. He makes him go the long way. He drives it down the right-hand side of the road. So he forces him wide on the approach into the final corner. Now Van Gisbergen looks to try and crisscross on the rear bumper of that car. You'll have another crack down here at turn one. Brody again tries to cover down here. This is going to be the lively battle that we talked about. A little bit of rear brake locking that time for Van Gisbergen as things start to heat up on the run to turn one. And evidence of the Red Bull car sliding. Great battle now with three laps remaining. Six odd kilometres. It's worth the fight if you're Brody Kostecki. He slides a little wide into the left-hander at four and he gets a little love tap from Shane. He'll get another one here, so he comes out of the throttle. There's starting to be a bit of radio chat now. Once again, Van Gisbergen down the inside. He forces the issue. Kostecki is not going to yield in a hurry. He drives down the inside. They are locked in combat, and he's doing what Mark Scaife suggested. He's driving up the inside, and he continues to drive down the inside. He's permitted to do that. Van Gisbergen to the outside. What a great battle. And that is exactly what he needs to do. But what he's got to do is prop it here, too. Prop it, prop it, prop it. Now, has he got enough for a run this time? It's very close. And He's allowed to chop across the road like that, provided there's no overlap. And again now, we've got great racing on the run into one. It's almost turned into one 10-metre car. They are locked together, nose to tail. What a battle. We've got two laps remaining. If Kostecki can hang on to this, it'll be something of a mighty resistance and miracle because he's under extreme pressure. Bad sportsmanship flag for Kostecki. And now the issue being forced down the inside, it's on. Push and shove and push and shove and down the inside. Watch out for and here comes Davey. He's done a beautiful job there. And LeBron now breaks himself. And he's run. Cam Waters has run Brody wide. And now there's everybody involved in this one down there. Wonderful win, though, today by Will Brown by just 0.6 of a second. Makes it two wins so far in 23. Two poles, his fifth podium, and that's going to do his championship chances a power of good today. Cover oh. off the road as Van Gisbergen straight into the wall. Did he do it on his own? 
or was he escorted? So I, I'm, I thought these two things might have been connected. So there he's wide, and then uh, th that's the contact. Uh, and he stitches together his third victory of 2023. Brock Feeney has done a beautiful job today. Wounded Brody Kostecki, our championship leader, came into this race today with a 101-point advantage. And remember that the Van Gisbergen car had surgery between races, so it made heavy contact with the right front at the fence on the outside here of turn six. And there he goes. That's a position that gets him onto the podium. So Van Gisbergen and Kostecki alongside each other again. So Brody's trying to get around the outside to rehash this. Now that might be the early tyre condition. Yeah. Well, he's flicked back the other way. Oh, I thought there was going to be a hit then. What a weekend for Coca-Cola Racing and Will Brown makes it two victories in Tasmania. Oh, 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 oh. They're all backing up here. So they propped. That was a mess. While you were looking sideways briefly then, Mark, it got crazy in about third, fourth and fifth. They were checking up and it left Frosty to blaze on down the road. Now, this was awkward. Is this where... OK, that might be where... Yeah, that's it's where Brody... Done, yeah, because of the contact with the shell car. So it's actually already got the steering damage on it at that point. I missed all of that in the opening lap. Too many things to look at at once. Replay of the run in here to five. This is Van Gisbergen trying to go around the outside. He's tucked in behind Cam Waters. Now, this often looks good, but this is what happens when you're high and wide. So contact there with Brody. And the Red Bull's done a nice job here as well. Van Gisbergen's folded up into second. He's down the dirty side of the road. Can he force the issue? And he does, but he cuts everybody wide in the process. Cam Waters may be the beneficiary, and the monster car has popped out the other side. That was ultra bold by Van Gisbergen. What a dive. Through the final corner, squares it up, gasses up sideways out of the final corner, and that is one polished performance for Will Brown. He looks like he's hustling here. Yep, so big time hustle, and he's going to have a lunge down the inside. And uh, Brock won't argue that case. He's given him space and let him go by. So if there's enough energy in those tyres... Okay, so let's just see if we can get Andre, otherwise we won't work to give it back. Yeah. So that Why was... Why do I have to give it back? I just passed him. <laughs> so a little discussion going yes, on. We said he wasn't racing. I didn't want us to race. He wasn't racing. When he said he was going to push, he started doing burnouts to burn the rears off it. So a little uh, inter-team friction going on there at the moment. He's done it. Just having a look here. Yeah, he no, is, he's he's slowed it up and he's let, he's let him by. So the gigantic pressure here at the moment on Brown. Nice job. He did a good job to come off there nice and straight. Now the, the task is now do not get tricked at turn eight. Stop it on the inside, pull up in the middle. You stop it on the inside. Pull up in the middle, pull up in the middle. Get the little bump, get the little bump. And straighten it up. Now this is this is now the opposite to what it was before. I'm just gonna let him go. Yeah. No, got him. Let him go. Just got him. All right, here we go. The pendulum swings the other way now for Kostecki in the championship chase. And he wins for the first time since the Grand Prix in Melbourne. Woo! The sweet song of 15,000 horsepower ringing out across Sydney. And this time, Heimgartner does the job. Drops the clutch, gets the whole shot, and owns the racetrack all the way to the apex of Turn 1. And he's got a margin and big, big contact. And running right out around the outside is Will Brown. So Andre was able to arrive where he wanted to. It was three into one, does not go. So they all ended up crossing paths into turn one. The reigning champion, 34-year-old Kiwi, smacks that throttle, slides it out the other side. He waves to the crowd. And the bloke that brought eight victories here coming into the weekend sticks another one in the bank. Nine wins at Sydney Motorsport Park for Shane Van Gisbergen. 
Hold on, oh, off the road, oh. off the road. The Erebus car's plunged off to the right-hand side of the road over the top of the hill and Will Brown's run wide and he's gifted a position to Van Gisbergen. He slides it out of turn nine over the top of the kerb. He's letting a little bit of that margin drift. He's only got to do a couple of corners now. Get it back to second gear for one last time. And he lines it up through the final corner. And the apprentice today has joined the master. Feeney and Wincup are the winners of the Sandown 500 for 2023. Third in 2021 at this race with David Russell. Qualified best in 2022 last year for a position number nine. So far this year, it's been six poles and six wins, 16 podium visits, and he's on his fifth Bathurst 1000 start this weekend, and that was a nice oh. job. Oh, at the apex, but not quite on the exit. It's wagged its tail, and is that going to change the outcome of this lap? We'll have to see it from the outside because I don't know how much that oversteer moment and how much of the dirt it got him, but it was definitely a mistake on the exit. It made the apex beautifully, but the apex was not the story. It was the exit that was the problem. He carried pace by a couple of tenths into this qualifying. So he might have a little in hand if this car is matched to the conditions today, but things change so rapidly in supercar competition. Nothing is a fait accompli on board. Hard on the throttle out the other side of the part of the track we affectionately describe as under the tree. Through the metal grate section up at McPhillamy at Sulmo Park on the approach here to McPhillamy now. Into that throttle hard over the top of the hill and everybody enjoys watching this guy give you 110% over the top of the mountain. Kostek, he's got this thing dancing. He did a 51 flat to be one one hundred slower than Feeney in the first sector. He's in with a shout here. This we'll is get a read now on the second part of the lap. Oh, honestly, Neil, that run over Skyline and down the hill there was as good as oh, I've seen. How's the number? 32.7, the best that we've seen over the top of the hill. Now, if he can do it, Kostecki's showing the possibility of a pole here. He's already got six of them so far this year. He's only 25 years of age, but the number defies the maturity. This guy has been an absolute incredible athlete so far this year. He makes his mark down the bottom. He carries a lot of speed. This is looking very good. The QM is showing us that Brody could well get there. Puts his foot on the brake now for the final time in the Armourall Top 10 shootout for Coca-Cola Racing. And Brody Kostecki makes the line, and he does a blinder. It's a two minute 4.2. And he's put nearly half a second on the field to uncork something special at Bathurst. Oh, I'm problem slow. for the Red Bull car. What's going on? A white flag, a slow Red Bull car. Feeney. It's a drama for Feeney. It's a drama for Feeney at a critical phase of the race. And this is a gigantic game changer. What on earth has gone on with Brock Feeney's car? He was in a commanding position from a fuel strategy standpoint. Hey, 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 hey. Let's listen. Did you leave a stock back? We're hearing in the background that it's lost grunt. Got you there, mate. I'm so sorry about this, brother. We're going to try and get you back out, so we'll get you into the garage. And we'll uh, get you staying in the car, please. Into the garage where more people can dive on this car and work on it. Catastrophic situation. Let's go to Greg. Yeah, Jamie Woodcup, I just asked him what the issue is. They have gone inside the car. It's gearbox. Is it not actuation again, the same as the 888 car? He just told me it was gearbox, so driver's gone or unable to change gear. He's off to the USA in 2024, but not before he smashes home a hammer blow pre-departure. Shane Van Gisbergen is now a three-time winner of the great race. So there goes the tyres off the back of Shane's car. Ladies and gentlemen, your race 24 Repco Bathurst 1000 champions. Let the celebrations begin. We have
have got three kilometres of racing to go. And the margin is 0.3 of a second. One third of a second separates Cam Waters from Van Gisbergen. There's nothing in it through the first chicane. Waters, we know, might be vulnerable off turn four. Van Gisbergen opens up the corner. Waters covers just temporarily to try and make sure that he doesn't get eaten under brakes. But there's nothing in it on the run up to the fast chicane. He's got to make that Mustang wider if he's going to hang on here. He closes the margin, closes the margin, closes the margin on Van Gisbergen. He throws the thing through the chicane. He's doing That's everything it. he can. Is he going to be able to survive the last corner? For Waters, it's supercar race number 248. For Van Gisbergen, it's supercar race number 508. They're both drawing on every last millimetre of experience to get them to the chequered flag. The Camaro wags its tail out of turn 13. Waters might be able to hang on, but it's going to be very, very close. He's got unbelievable traction, Van Gisbergen. What's it like out the other side? What an outstanding supercar race. And I think that Cam Waters has ticked the box. Next time round, it is one lap to go. It's 2,900 metres of racetrack. Can Reynolds hang on for this nail biter? The second day in a row, we've got a cracking race on the Gold Coast. Reynolds hangs on into turn one. Oh. He's got the slide going. That's the second or third time we've seen him do it. The thing broke wide, and that'll raise some eyebrows up and down the lane. That protected him also down at the hairpin. It certainly did. So, 11.5, last lap, Brody Kostecki just did the fastest lap of the race, and everyone's blowing up deluxe about him going through that first chicane. That will certainly raise eyebrows, as I said a few moments ago. The back of the car, though, had broken loose, and there'll be a lot of discussion about that one later, and it's crossed up again on the run into turn 11. Right at the moment, Reynolds has only got four corners remaining, separating him from victory. He's still got a car length in hand. Now he points it into the sun down towards 14 and 15 for the last time. We'll come back to all the sporting and political questions later. He's getting a rough up from Brody. He's out the other side. And David Reynolds is able to put the pedal to the metal and stitch together a race victory on the Gold Coast.